romantic comedies. Oh! <laughs> Damn. Take that, all you people who believe in love out there. Damn. Mm-hmm. What, do you, what, what do you think about that, world? I no. like. You like it? Yeah. Brian, what's the roman- the most romantic story you've ever heard? Mm. The tale of my parents. Do you want to t- do you want to share how your parents met on the podcast? <laughs> have I already? I feel like you might have already. <laughs> no, you I'm shared you shared uh, the story of when you were born. Share the story of when you were conceived. I'm good, frankly. <laughs> I know the story, but I'm not gonna share it. You know the story. Yeah. Mm, well, that information's out there. Welcome back to Stacked Episode 90, everybody. Um, it is a beautiful uh, day in Southern California, and um, we are here back again to talk about, um, well, a big popular genre in cinema, one that's uh, coming back to theaters this weekend with Bros. Um also, guys, I just realized that this mo- this episode's coming out in October. So should I theme it like Halloweenathon? There's no, there's or nothing I put this- scarier. <laughs> there's nothing scarier. Try than and maybe comedies. try and com- maybe there's try and combine like commitment. romance comedy with this. <laughs> yes, we will be scary, it but is then scary. Yeah, but then there could be hearts around it. You know, I don't know. Um, guys. What what makes a good romantic comedy? You know, I feel like there's so many different kinds out there. Um, for me, I feel like I really wanted to track sort of like a chronological, uh, like a history of romantic comedies. So I have some from many decades, many a decade, because it has been a genre that's been around forever. Um, and just I want to show how it's really evolved. It evolves, you know, romance, dating, and everything evolves around culture. Culture changes from decade to decade, uh, from art movement to art movement. So that's how I'm doing this. But Chris, what what was like your criteria of making a good romantic comedy on this list? I think for me, like a good romantic comedy needs the big thing is for me the tonal balance between, um, you know, exploring like the nuances of romance and all that stuff. You know, uh, and that always changes depending on what kind of relationship it is, but also. Uh yeah, you gotta balance that out with some right the good with some good comedy. And oftentimes that's a very hard thing to do. Comedy's hard to do on its own, let alone balance that with genuinely compelling romance oh, genuinely compelling romantic arc. Um so I picked out some films that uh that kind of went in that direction. I hope that I picked some films. I think these these are like these are all really fun, I feel like. Or like a mixture, because sometimes the the tone can lean a certain way towards more of a romantic film than a comedy film or more of a comedy film than a romantic film. And sometimes they tread the middle. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, w- I wanted to cover a little bit of everything. But my big thing was, yeah, getting the tone right. That's all. Yeah, I like that. Brandon, you're, you're, that's... you're, very, you're very backlit right now. It's, you're very menacing. I kind of like it. Yeah, because I just, my lamp in my room makes it hotter, so I'm it's off. Oh, okay, I see. So, well, yeah. You look, you look, you look epic. What, what's your uh, definition? That's why, that's why I chose Fanshawn the Cricket. Just kidding. Ooh, <laughs> classic. Double Two stack. Weeks. Name drop. <laughs> double, triple stack. Uh, a good romantic comedy. You know, there, there are the cliche ones out there. Like, I think early Matthew McConaughey uh, romantic comedies aren't very good. Uh, I watched one recently, actually rewatched one recently and i didn't oh i didn't really like it all that much um so like the good ones are like clever you know they either try to mix up the formula or they embrace it wholeheartedly with like an earnestness that you can't help but adore right or they're sometimes they're, they're more vulnerable and they do skew more towards drama you know there are certainly romantic comedies that have drama in them uh, and I think a good mixture of romance and drama, but also the good chemistry between the leads is necessary, you know, to making a good romantic comedy. And I didn't 
like, well, let's just say my picks aren't final yet. I have, I am having a very hard time choosing. <laughs> You're gonna improv like jazz, huh? All right, I like. You it. like jazz. Like you like. You like jazz. jazz. You like, like jazz. jazz. Is, that, is that a romantic comedy? You like jazz. The B no. movie. Well, yes. yes it's kind it of a romantic. Com- yeah, right. technically. What what's the what's the lady's name in B movie? I can find it. Ray Liotta. Uh, Ray Liotta. Uh, I forgot. Sh- her I can name. find it. I got. It, I got it. Uh. Uh. Vanessa Bloom. Vanessa. That's right. Because Patrick Warburton goes, Vanessa, you're dating a bee. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good impression. You're For dating speed. a bee. <laughs> Why does yogurt and I have to be so difficult? <laughs> can you do it? Because I, you can do it way better. Why does that. yogurt and I have to be so difficult? <laughs> there, there is someone who I used to work with who does the Patrick Warburton impression perfectly, and he would all he would always used to say, "You're dating a bee" while we were on set. <laughs> and oh my god, I was like, "Holy shit, it's perfect!" It's like he's actually here. Um, all right, let's talk about some romantic comedies. Let's get right to it. Uh, Wait. once we, but first, rules of the show. Wait, do you have something to say? No, I was just worried that you weren't going to do the rules of the show, so I was going to remind you, but I guess you didn't need reminding. I, I was going to do the rules of the show, but then I realized that I wasn't going to mention that I was going to do the rules of the show, because it's, like, muscle memory to me, so, yeah, thanks for the reminder. Once we consider a topic or theme and go our separate ways to construct our own three film stack, then after a week we come back here on the podcast and share our own stacks one film at a time. Then at the end of the show we'll mix and match our nine films to make the ultimate decision on what quintessential three film stack we are checking out of this hypothetical video store. Brandon. Little Brandon. You're up first. Good luck. All right. I'm picking a 1990 romantic comedy. Let's start out with Pretty Woman. Pretty woman, Pretty woman walking down the street. Copyright. Pretty woman. It's really copyright. <laughs> it was too perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about uh, Pretty Woman. I've never seen it. Chris, have you seen it? No, but I love Julia Rob Hertz and Richard oh. Gere. <laughs> okay, well, this basically follows uh, Julia Roberts, who is a Hollywood prostitute, uh, and she's hired by Richard Gere to like escort her around so she's basically a hired escort for him Say and no more. so you know in all <laughs> honesty it's the opposite to tracks this guy's a very wealthy businessman sort of situation she is like downtrodden but at no point during this movie does it feel anything less than classy because of the two leads on screen and their romance is really compelling and beautiful They've got great chemistry with one another. A lot of uh, there's an iconic moment in this movie that was improvised uh, between the actors and has be- since become like very well known. Uh, yeah, and then it's also a very compelling tale about a guy like learning to like care for the people around him and the businesses and like the lower class and middle class because at first you you see he's like very stuck in his ways, you know, stuck in his business minded approach to the point where the people around him are like an echo chamber of his own thoughts so to have a different voice like julia roberts uh her character vivian is very good now the musical uh which i watched at steve seagerstrom hall not very good no offense to those no offense to those who were involved in that production i don't think it's a good adaptation of the movie but the movie is a classic so yeah why wasn't it that good uh i think they they altered some things from the movie that worked for me a lot um not in terms of like the main story but in terms of like character directions and i didn't appreciate that and some of the music was kind of forgettable some of it was good but a lot of it was forgettable Huh. chris have you ever seen pretty woman no, this yeah. seems like this. This seems like one of those uh American classics that just well, I don't know if it's a classic, but like, yeah. like just those like, yeah, like uh one of those movies that just kind of like went over my head, uh growing up because like maybe it just didn't make its way over to me, uh in quite the same way, um. But there were definitely movies from that era that uh did, but I guess this one just fell under the radar for me. But I do, uh, I do love Julia Roberts, um, and Richard Gere. My mother loves deeply. 
uh, to much my father's dismay. Um, and yeah, I'm sold. This does sound cool. I also do like that you said, Brandon, that, um, you know, the, the, what's the word, shall I say, log line of the film does make it sound like a kind of a sleazy movie, but I'm glad to hear that it's like, it's classy and it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, like kind of make Julia Roberts' uh, uh, occupation like a joke or something. Cause it's not. But right, yeah, right. I like it, that. it gives good care to it. You would expect yeah. it to be because it's like the 90s when it came yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. That's good yeah. to hear. Because I've certainly seen early, even like 2000s films that don't do that, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is a, a big classic that has gone over my head. Uh, I feel like I do need to check it out. Jason Alexander's in it. I'm looking at it. You know, good old. Uh, George Costanza from Seinfeld. Overrated. Got, gotta love him. Jason Alexander also stars in... Anybody know? Anybody know what else he stars in? Dunstan checks in. That's right. Very good, everybody. All right. Let's move on to our next one. Chris, what is your first romantic comedy? All right. Well, when I was putting together my stack, I actually... Uh, I was looking into, like, a big list of, like, what are the what are the iconic rom-com films? And I was like, oh, wow, I know so many of these. These, like, these are all great. But then as I started going through, I was like, you know what I'm noticing? Not many people of color in these. So every single one of my films is an Asian couple. That was what, that was what I challenged myself with. Whoa. So for my first film, as the resident uh, POC of the Stack Trio, uh, <laughs> I thought I would go with this one. So uh, I went with uh, Peter Chan's 1996 film, Brandon, you have this on your watch list. Uh, Comrades, almost a love story. Yeah. Anyone ever heard of this? I have, I have never heard of this. It's on my watch list. All right. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie. This is one of my favorite films to ever come out of Hong Kong. I think it's a beautiful movie. Um, it tells a story, uh, a decade-spanning story, about two mainland immigrants in Hong Kong, played by Leon Lai and as you and the both of you both know her, Maggie Cheung. Um, it pokes lot. And so, yeah, it tells this story about these two people who come to the city with big dreams and things they want to achieve in their life. And, um, you know, we kind of go about the paces with them about how they navigate their time here and everything. Um, it pokes a lot of fun at like, uh, the new arrivals of Hong Kong without jumping into like, uh, discriminatory rhetoric about immigration, but it does also have like it's also elevated by a conversation about migrant workers and cultural divides, which is really neat in a rom com. It's rare that you get to see that. Um, but most importantly, the film is also a larger allegory for uh, this Hong Kong's relationship with China, which I find really interesting to see because this came out one year before Hong Kong was handed over back to China. Uh, so oh, I thought that was really cool to like kind of see it as like a uh, viewing it in the context of, uh, you know, almost kind of preempting what's to come. Um, it's also a very tender and loving film with plenty of jokes. Uh, it can definitely lean more towards romantic drama at times than rom romantic comedy. But I will say that that heart-wrenching drama is balanced really nicely by uh, the lighthearted comedy. Um, and yeah, I would recommend this movie to anyone who likes romance films at all. Uh, and um just wanted to throw this one out there because uh, i'm i'm actually surprised that i've never talked about this movie but there you go brandon you've added this to watch list what made you uh want to do that oh it was on letterbox's top 250 for a little bit but also i didn't know it was a comedy i kind of thought it was just a, a dramatic romance but it is it is leaning more romantic drama at times but the like it's, I wouldn't even necessarily call the genre specifically a comedy, but there, I would say that there's definitely enough of a comedic and lighthearted uh, undertone to the film that does lift it towards that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, strictly speaking, it's probably you'd probably classify this more as a romantic drama. Right. I was just what intrigued me most about the film, other than its critical status, was uh, the idea of. Because often in romantic comedies, it's the opposites that attract sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But here, there was an even starker difference between the two people in love because of, like, their belief system, you know? Yeah. And that I think that is a very interesting political uh, sort of angle to take that will probably make it more compelling than your average romance. Because sometimes mm -hmm. romances are 
built upon the writing of the comedy and the chemistry between the two leads. Uh, yeah. So to add an extra layer of depth might actually help it. So, yeah. I agree. That sounds... Mm -hmm. um, like, the only other, like, political romantic comedy I can think of is, like, a... Uh... Long Shot? Long Shot, yeah. And that's a good one. I, I liked Long Shot. Um, I did too. But I'm flipping through stills right now of this movie, and I don't know. It, it, it looks really pretty, uh, how the characters are shot composed against the city of Hong Kong, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah, it's a really beautiful movie just to, like, watch. Just because it's so, like, and it also captures the moment, that era, beautifully. Like, the 90s Hong Kong. Gorgeous. Yeah. Um, you know what? It's going on my watch list. I'm adding it right now. I want to check oh, it out. Bam. No? It can only be on mine. Why? Because I said so. Oh, sure. All right. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Let's get into my uh, next, my first film. I don't know why next. Sorry, it, my room is very hot right now. Um, just want to let everybody know why I'm sort of out of it. Um, AB. Baby, I am kind of a baby when it comes to heat. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. I'm from the little snowland of Salt Lake City. It's 79 um, degrees right now. Yeah, and it's humid. Our insulation here is awful. Anyways, all right, I'm picking a film uh, from my three white people movies. I feel like there was... Um, <laughs> I feel like nobody else is choosing three white people movies, so I thought I'd bite the bull and do that, you know? Maybe Brandon's also doing three white people hey, maybe he's not because he he doesn't know his stack he's improvising yeah. so now brand you have a chance to look better than me so yeah um, ethan you're no it's not bad you're you're representing your people i'm re representing mine simple as that <laughs> <laughs> let's go white people let's go i thought there white wasn't enough panther? white people white panther <laughs> <laughs> we need brandon more today, brandon today was pitching to me he said why is there no white panther and i was like dude <laughs> <laughs> I'm j I'm joking. He Spike didn't do Lee that. can direct it. <laughs> Spike Lee can direct it. That would be interesting, actually. Um, <laughs> let's see what Spike Lee can do with the White Panther. <laughs> All right, no more of that. Um, I'm choosing a 1941 film. Look at me. I'm the one that's doing the classics now. Uh, Preston Sturges, Lady Eve. Do you guys remember watching Lady? Oh my Eve God! Wait, is this the movie where is this the movie where I fell off my seat, or is this yes. a different one? Yeah. Yes, this. Yeah. This, oh my god. One this of the was one jokes. of the biggest film history screening surprises. Uh we see I we did a double feature because remember we Yeah, it was with uh Paradise. it was Trouble in Paradise, which was Trouble also Paradise, good. Yeah. I remember yeah. um yeah. we couldn't watch Trouble in Paradise the week before because Anaheim was on fire. So we couldn't <laughs> miss our screen. So, no, right. so we did a double feature of both of these. Um and I remember I remember I, I already watched um trouble in paradise um because i thought we, i thought we, i just assumed that we'd have to watch it on our own you know because i don't know we had to leave you know so i remember i i listened to a podcast while everyone else was watching trouble in paradise in the theater i put my headphones on and sat in the back um but i'm glad i didn't do that for lady eve because um this movie i just remember it being so funny like Henry Fonda is such a himbo in this movie. Dude. Like he's so he's so stupid in this movie that it's great, yeah. you know? But he's not like he's not like stupid. He's like playfully stupid. And he's just like I don't know, he's just like I think he's one of the charm most charming dudes in film yeah. history. I agree. Um and it's just got a funny plot to it, you know, um of this girl trying to like uh like being a con artist to this guy and then she actually falls in love with him and then he figures out that she like that she's a con artist uh and then he like he kicks her out so then he tries she tries to be the lady eve and then like get revenge but also fall back in love with him and then but also like steal from him um i don't know i just remember like i think this is an important uh film when looking at the romantic comedy because it does like blend classic hollywood romance with classic hollywood comedy because you got a lot of slapstick in there you got a lot of uh you know witty banter comedy that you'd see back then but then it's also a, like a pretty like 
I don't know. It's a pretty wholesome love story too. Um, so I wanted to shout this one out as my first pick because I think I like when we when we do like these big genres like this. I like tracking the history of it, you know. Um, so I wanted to start here. Um, but I know you guys have both seen it because we all watched this for class. So, uh, Brandon, what do you think about this? I love this movie. It's been a while since I think it's been since film history that I watched it, just because it's really hard to find. Yeah, uh, early Lubitsch can be, and early Preston Sturges can be as well. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, their classics are available, like To Be or Not to Be. That one's available. It's not that good, but it's you know it's available. But the Lady Eve is great. It's an out of print Criterion that I need to get my hands on. Oh, my grubby really? little hand. Yeah. Uh, I I hope they do a remaster someday because it was only on DVD. It was never on Blu-ray. Right. Uh, but I remember just really enjoying this movie and the chemistry between the two leads was electric. I love Henry Fonda and it's not like he's playing against type here because usually he is a good guy in a movie. Um. Like, if you look at his work with, like, Young Mr. Lincoln, 12 Angry Men on Golden Pond, stuff like that. Yeah. He's a decent man. He rarely plays a villain. But he rarely plays a himbo because he's usually pretty smart in most of his roles, I would say, rather than affable and forgettable. Yeah, I always see him as, like, a wise protagonist, you know? Right, yeah. The guy who always knows the right thing to do, you know? Right, Mm mm-hmm. But he's not here. He's kind of just like, I'm after the gazooka woman. (laughs) <laughs> yeah hubba hubba goggle eyes, hoogs <laughs> eyes pop out ahead Woo! <laughs> exactly exactly. Yeah. exactly chris what do you think about this movie yeah this was a really fun movie uh that we got to see in our film aesthetics class um yeah like you guys said this is a really like classic com uh com- like rom-com i do think the plot is also really unique because it integrates like almost like a crime narrative into it, which is really fun. Not something yeah. you see very often in rom coms. Um, and that, like you said, Harry Fonda doesn't play villains often, if ever. Uh, this still has one of the one of the funniest jokes in so, enough that it knocked me out of my seat. I thought it was so funny. Um, yeah, it, it it's just it's a really fun time. Um, the specifics of the movie do evade me because it's been a couple years now, but I do remember really enjoying myself with this one, especially um Preston Sturges uh I I haven't seen any of his other films but I've heard of uh um his other film uh Gulliver's Trap I mean Sullivan's Trap it was one Trap. of the first films on the <laughs> oh. that we mentioned one of the on first Spanish. movies we talked about that's right holy shit yeah that's great Gulliver's uh, Trap was this pre-code <laughs> was this pre-code Hollywood Oh yeah, it's uh, 1941, yeah, right? 41. Yeah. I don't cuz if it I remember there being a lot more innuendo and or uh explicitness to the the romance in comparison, oh, right. which I don't think you would later see in like the early mid 50s and I don't know, like 50s and 40s, late 40s with right. comedies, romantic comedies especially. But I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you wouldn't cuz yeah, everything got a bit more uh Douglas Sirkin, you know? Yeah. But even then, there's some innuendos there, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But I don't think there was wi- they were as wild as this. I don't know. But uh, definitely a good movie. Y'all should check it out. Um, s- three stacked approved by us three stackies. Um, all right, let's go into the next round. Brandon, what's your second pick? I'm picking a Best Picture nominee. Oh. 1996's Jerry Maguire. Oh, show Mr. me Cruz. the money. I I have recently come out as a Tom Cruise lover. He is my number one actor of all time. Really? Look at my letterbox. You'll see on my top 10 actors of all time. Well, uh, I, I think we'd also like to announce um, this is very exciting news. Brandon, uh, he's finally accept uh, the Church of Scientology's offer. Um to become a member and that means that stacked will be funded um and actually become the first billion dollar podcast isn't that exciting uh, everyone thank oh, you brandon yeah. for offering your life and soul to the church of scientology and thank you to tom cruise i do uh, what i can yeah we we love you all uh remember we're just we're just a group that just wants love around the world peace and love and finding your true soul in past lives and uh space lizards thank you anyway continue 
90s Tom Cruise was just built different in terms of acting. If you look at his, his any of his performances from the 90s, they're all great. You got Magnolia, The Firm, A Few Good Men, uh, Jerry Maguire, and the first Mission Impossible movie. All of those are like really great performances in movies that like are pretty good, some of the best of his career. And honestly, this movie is pretty great. Uh, him and Renee Zellweger have great chemistry. Uh, he's a sport agent who kind of learns to care for players as much as he learns to care for commitment to another human being. And especially if it's like um, a relationship that needs to be made like to me needs to like mate yeah people need to make it work you know because there are there is more complicated like aspects to it you know often romantic comedies are between two very eligible bachelors single 20 something single 30 somethings whatever jerry Maguire is about two single somethings but there's added uh there's added tension because one of them has a is in a relationship when they meet the one of them has a kid the other has a like really strict job, which requires them to travel all the time. So there's a lot more here than just like two people falling in love and like going on a few dates together that are have comedic hijinks happening. This is like an actual story to it. Uh, it has conflicts and they make it work. It's definitely very unique as far as romantic comedies go. Is this the one where he says, show me the money? Yes. Or is that okay? Um, that's all I know about this film. Is show me the money. Um, but no, didn't we? Did we watch a scene from Jerry Maguire in a class? I don't know. Not that I know of. Why would that we have we done together? that in any of the film classes? Any of Kelly Fury's I, classes? I doubt it. I know we did. <laughs> what did I watch it in? I feel like Desser would it's, show it's this. It's where it's where she's breaking up with him in the beginning, right? Is that? I don't. I don't, I don't think know. we watched it in any of the classes that I took with you. I would have remembered what? that. Oh, I love it. This is the one of the best Cameron Crowe movies, if not the best. It's what better than I We watch? Bought a Zoo. <laughs> That's for Are sure. Are you serious? Yes, it's Nothing's by that director. Better than that. Oh wow. Oh. Um, yeah, I I don't know much about this film, um, but it seems to have the sort of intrigue that you love, Brandon, and the the man that you love. Uh, Tom Cruise. Um, He's great. He, I mean, he is pretty. Scientology aside, guys, he is pretty great, isn't he? Like, no, yeah. I'm not. I'm he, not saying great as a person. I think he is a horrible person. I think he's an absolute garbage, horrible person. Well, we don't know him. Well, just from Survivor stories from the church and how like he's just treated people. Um. I think he. I think he is a horrible person. I'm just gonna go out and say that. I hope Scientologists don't come after me. <laughs> Watch Damn it. Why are you going after we're gonna our be lo- We're going to be looking out. <laughs> they, they <laughs> just luck, got an guys. email. They've dropped the sponsorship, and they're watching our house 24-7. Um, <laughs> and spray painting my car and keying my car and popping the tires. Um, <laughs> good. But he but just, the, like, no, he yeah, just goes right. above the guy, beyond, you know? Yeah, know. no no matter what, guy never phones commits. it in. Yeah. Yeah, and like he will he puts it all on the line, which is frankly more than you can say than a lot of uh, uh than about a lot of actors out there. Uh no matter if it's acting, action, whatever, the guy he gives it his all and you got to respect that. You you the can't wait on that. The only time he's phoned it in is for Jack Reacher, I think. Or Wh- in which he never goes back, by the way. I never That's saw a- that one. I saw that uh, first one. <laughs> I, I recently learned that he never goes back, Jack Reacher. He, that he Jack does Reacher not go guy. back. He does not it's go sh- back. Because I feel like there's two modes of Tom Cruise. He goes crazy, or he plays himself. And I like it when he goes crazy, you know, frankly. I do but too. But then there's the third mode where he's like, you know, a good actor. <laughs> Except for Vanilla Sky. He was not good in Vanilla Sky. I think he was trying too hard in yeah. Vanilla Sky. He That's commit too problem. hard for that, and yeah. just open your eyes. Bad, and it was just a bad movie to begin with. Watch the original. You'll yeah, like it. I bet. I bet I will. Um, cool. Jerry Maguire. Uh, Chris, non-white people movie. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I've never seen Jerry Maguire. <laughs> God damn it! 
Oh yeah. Oh, are you asking me for my next pick, or are you? Oh, uh... I forgot you didn't talk about Jeremy Gore. I'm so sorry. Oh no. Do you want no, to you're say good. But Jeremy no, Gore? that's I just, literally I knew it. I hadn't seen it. I was, sorry. No, yeah, that's literally it. I haven't seen the movie. Uh, I know the one scene. Is this the scene? The movie where he, or is it? I don't know. Is this the scene where like he rolls out his underwear and like? That's singing? risky business, right? Risky business. Never mind. That's not okay. as good. That's a I, 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 though. I don't blame you. I always get those two confused. You I think it's because it's like kidding. old, old quote unquote Tom Cruise. Yeah. Um, but okay. anyway, yeah, okay. Uh, then in that case, that what that means is I have never seen a still or anything from this movie. I don't know what this movie is really about, other than what, the hell? what we said today. Yeah, I don't know anything about Dreamer. I need to get you guys on these these romantic comedies. You're, I, yeah. you're slacking. We're lacking. <laughs> slacking. All right. Are you guys ready? No. Let's do it. All right. I am picking a movie from 2002, also a Hong Kong film, directed, co directed. Between Y Ka Fai and believe it or not, Johnny Toe. Oh, Johnny Toe has Johnny directed Toe a, rom-com did a romantic comedy called Fat Choi Spirit. If anyone doesn't know, Fat Choi in Cantonese basically means good luck and is often used in the phrase Gong Hei Fat Choi, which means, which in Cantonese means, um, like. Uh, like wish you good luck, which you say during like Chinese New Year. It's basically in the same spirit as Merry Christmas. Um, anyway, so uh, Fa Choi Spirit is more often referred to as the Andy Lau Mahjong movie because uh, Andy Lau is the main actor and his character's name is Andy because they know everyone's just going to call him Andy anyway. Uh, so Andy plays a character named Andy who has been gifted with this mystical blessing that allows him to have the greatest luck in the world, but only and specifically only when it comes to Mahjong. Rest of his life fucking sucks. Um, <laughs> anyway, so the ca- um, the movie is a lot of fun. The cast of characters surrounding Andy are his senile mother, his estranged, like, down-on-his-luck brother, a-, a local gang, but this gang only deals in Mahjong money. So, but like, but they're treated like gangsters, which is really fun. They're real, they're all very vibrant and colorful characters. Um, very absurd, uh, very larger than life personalities. And the comedy really does write itself in every scene just because of how ridiculous all of these personalities in one scene are. Um, but the romance element comes in with Andy's girlfriend, who's the person that gave him this mystical blessing when she, uh, prayed for him one Chinese New Year. Um, anyway, so yeah, the whole drama comes from Andy's struggle to, uh, to love this girl because of her anger issues, but also because of his own obligations to his work as a professional mahjong player and, you know, the complexities of their relationship. Um, yeah, you know, it's not the world's most like eloquent movie or anything like that, but it's a very fun and over the top film. Uh, the drama is so overplayed, but in a weird way, as like weird and almost soap opera y it can be at times. That kind of makes this movie more engaging just because of how ridiculous it is and how much it's willing to own it. Um and yeah, so it's absurd style and tone really does it does itself favors. Um yeah, it's a really fun time of a movie and I'd love to watch this with you guys one day. This is honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I love Johnny Toe's films, but this is my number one Johnny Toe film to show you wow. just because of how stupid it is. Really? Holy yeah. fuck. Um, Sounds like it's uh, kind of a bad lick Brian sort of movie. Yeah, it's it's kind of <laughs> trashy, but you're 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 kind of here for it, you know. I'm gonna put bad lick Brian on the thumbnail for this video. <laughs> this is a bad lick Brian episode. No, this sounds really good, and I'm looking at the letterbox page for it right now. The poster is fabulous. It's absolutely fa- like I just I love how energetic it's like red and pink and yellow mm-hmm. um <laughs> you like the Hold colors on. yeah i like the colors but i i just gotta i gotta stop the podcast for a second <laughs> what what happened I, I i you know i'm trying to talk about uh <laughs> fat choice spirit and you know i get a text from one of our co-hosts of the show brandon <laughs> while i'm talking about this and he <laughs> He sends me a link um, from chewboom.com. Um, Jack in the Box adds a new Jack's Mega Munchie Box. Oh. And um, he's asking if he should, if should I cop? If he should get it. 
Uh, so let's listeners. What do you think? Yeah, um, listeners. What do you think? You know, um, as afraid I uh, as afraid I am of Brandon's cholesterol. Um, I think it would be ridiculous and funny if he did get it. Um, but again, you know, um, I don't know. Do you guys want to know what's in it? Sure. What's it? What's in it? Curly fries. Okay. 30 chicken nuggets. 30 45, 45 tiny tacos, buttermilk ranch, and creamy avocado lime dipping cups. For how much? $20. That's so not bad for 20 bucks. Fat choice still, spirit. That... <laughs> I was going to say about Fat Choice Spirit. Um, it seems like an episode of regular show to me. You know, it kind of is, yeah. <laughs> Where like the gangs fight, but they do it in mahjong, and then he has like the most luck in the world. I don't know. Yeah, and like you know how like they have like the thing where, especially in like poker, you know, like if you're if the characters are cheating, they do like the like the sort of like like scratch the nose. You know what I mean? But yeah. these guys are like doing shit like this, like like if they're trying to hit like oh get me one of these, they're doing like. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> It's kind of like um, I feel like it'd kind of be like over the top, yeah. the arm wrestling sports movie. Yeah, it's very, it's very slapstick, which is really fun. I love. You don't that. see that that often nowadays, too. <laughs> I'm into That's it. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There's my second pick. Um, Brandon, what do you, what do you think? And are you gonna get the Mega Munchie box? I will attempt to after the podcast. Are There's you no fucking... promises. <laughs> why are you? Why are you so upset? Can I give you some money and maybe have some of it? No, I don't want that. I don't want to get anywhere near that. What am I saying? Anyways, talk about Fat Choice Spirit. Hey, I mean, it sounds interesting. Like, it, And it sounds very different and co-directed by Johnny Toe, you know. There's no action in it, right? It's like like stereotypical rom-com. No, not not even. A, like, the most is uh, Andy Lau falls over at one point, I think. Right. But that's it. <laughs> Well, that's like, you know, that's all you need to know. Like, if you could inf- infuse the energy of a Johnny Toe action movie into a comedy, it seems like it could be funny and could work really well. And yeah. of course, or you could I've hate it. Heard it, of it before this. I, I, <laughs> it is a, it is a little out there, so it, it could rub you the wrong way. Or it could rub you the right I way. I like out know. there movies, though. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But that's my pick. Uh, Fat Choice Bird. Recommend. I love it. I love it. All righty. Um,. I am next, um, and I'm choosing a movie that none of you have seen, but I highly recommend. It's from a director that I think Brandon's a big fan of that he hasn't seen. Uh, it is from director Peter Bogdanovich. It's the 1972 film What's Up, Doc? Um, starring... What's up, Doc? Starring Barbara Streisand. Hey. Streisand. What's up, Doc? Barbara Streisand and Ryan O'Neal. The, those are the, the two people in this movie, the two leads. Um, it is it is uh, a film that my father showed to me uh, when I was in high school. Go, went in completely blind and thought it was one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. Um, so the premise is um, Ryan O'Neal's character is a geologist. Um who there he is he's attending this conference in San Francisco where he's showing off these rocks that produce like certain uh if i remember correctly like certain musical um notes to them basically these rocks are pointless but if he hits them they make these tones right and he comes into the hotel um with this uh what it's like i think it's plaid luggage yeah, um, plaid overnight bags. Yeah, plaid mm-hmm. overnight bags. They're they're plaid, and um, then uh, Barbara Streisand's character comes in with the same luggage, but it's her clothes in it. You know, nothing important. She's sort of like you know she's been kicked out of school a lot. She's sort of um, you know, so she's sort of a quirky character who's just like living on the road. You know, who tries to swindle people. So she tries to um, sort of get with the scientist so she can like stay the night in this room because she can't afford it you know um but also there um comes these this mysterious dude named mr smith who has um he has the same luggage but with these like top secret government papers that like he's on a mission um 
and there is like there's other spies trying to get these papers and then um there is a a wealthy woman who also has the same luggage but it has like all these priceless jewels and diamonds in it you know um and at the hotel uh basically all these all these uh packages are mixed up when they're delivered to their rooms you know so then it becomes sort of this crazy story of like these characters uh trying to get their their own luggages and then them thinking that like the other people want to have wanted to steal their luggages so then becomes like this fake espionage story um chase film um while these two uh, streisand and ryan o'neill start to build chemistry together and like fall in love and um it is really funny really witty and it all comes to oh my god one of the the greatest like chase sequences ever which was the chase sequence that inspired the sequence in ant-man and the wasp when they're driving around san francisco you know um the car chase there uh peyton reed said this was like a direct influence uh up on that scene was what's up doc because it is just it's really great slapstick comedy there's this one scene that i will never forget where um some barrels get loose and they start rolling down the street and there's this guy (laughs) who's walking down the street and he sees the barrels coming towards him and he starts running away and he jumps a fence and you guys know that scene in the nice guys where they drop off that body and it lands in like a birthday party yeah basically it's the same thing where he drops it he jumps a fence but it's a steep drop and he lands on the table to this picnic party and the way it's like timed and the sound editing where it's like it's a really quiet scene and he does that and it's a big crash it is one of the hardest laughs i've ever had in a long time um the acting is great uh you know it it's sort of a film that sort of uh you know it's the 70s these people aren't really uh your atypical romantic leads you know um and they sort of come together during these un- like these uh crazy circumstances and it's funny um it's got good romance in it um uh, yeah it's just a great film if you haven't if you haven't uh checked it out i highly recommend you do have you guys ever heard of this movie brandon and chris what's up doc i've seen uh, the I've poster only, but that's it i've only heard of uh the way bugs bunny says it <laughs> yeah and... only bugs bunny what's up doc, what's up, doc? uh but no yeah it it does sound like fun um it's just i've never heard of it this, this movie before i didn't i when you said it i was like is he making a bugs bunny ref- like joke or <laughs> oh there's actually a movie called what's up doc i didn't know that yeah well look at this guys we're all recommending films that we haven't seen uh just goes to show how big the romantic comedy genre is brand you got anything to say about it to all right, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> and I like Barbara Streisand. Sometimes. Sometimes. When do you not like her? When she won't shut the fuck up. Damn. He said it here I first, think, folks. I think she tries too hard sometimes as an actress. Damn. She overdoes it. Just uh, like it, in that one movie out. with... um, Seth Rogen. The Seth guilt Rogen. Trip. The guilt trip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Prince of Tides, I'm thinking. What a tryhard. <laughs> <laughs> I hated her in Guilt Trip. Ah, stinky movie. <laughs> uh, all right, look at this. Another short, tight episode. Let's see if we can get this under an hour, Brandon. What's your next film? It's last uh, one. I am choosing a 2022 film. What? Hmm. Are you choosing it- Marry Me? No. Okay. Let's, <laughs> what rom com came out this year? Yeah. It's it's only on Hulu, so if you want to check it out, go there. Uh, yeah. it's it's it has a it has a white lead and it has a non white lead. So why? <laughs> this is how we win, guys. This is how we win. You uh, son of a bitch, you make me look bad <laughs> on my own show. Is this why you have the? <laughs> stop him! Stop him! Stop! Him. Muzzle that dog. What? <laughs> oh my god. What's your fucking right. movie? I'm picking Good Luck to You, Leo Grande. Oh, yeah, with Emma Thompson. Yes, very good movie. Very good movie here. Um, so basically, this is a movie about a school teacher who hires a male sex worker. So a la uh, Pretty Woman a little bit, except it's different because it all takes place basically in one room. 
Uh, and she basically does it to like free herself to have validation in herself uh, about her own sexuality. Because as an English, uh, as a teacher, uh, she is like supposed to be this clean, squeaky clean sort of person. She never has any excitement in her life. Not to all teachers have no excitement, but it, uh, in a lot of cases, that is the the thing. It is a very safe position because you are dealing with children for a living. Um, and a, as a matter of fact, the person that she's staying with, the uh, the sex worker, is kind of a person to open her eyes to a lot of uh, the magic of sex as well as um self-love and self-care but mm. also the idea of something more than that you know a little bit more romance than what she's used to and in that way i think it's an incredibly positive film not only that i mean it features a female perspective but it isn't like you know it isn't trying to play to one side or the other like it's not exploiting her in a way as to get male audiences like aroused but it doesn't take the female perspective either that might close it off to uh, a male audience who would not be able to like communicate with the film in any way because it, they wouldn't be able to relate to her character. But I think in, it, what she goes through is incredibly relatable, even if she is much older and the opposite sex as myself. And in that way, I think it's a great film because it tackles a lot of different issues, race, uh, sexuality, uh conservative versus uh conservative and tradition versus like more liberal and progressive ideas and yeah i think it's a great film i, I think you guys should check it out yeah i i heard great it's things awesome. about it when it came out um during sundance right i think it premiered during sundance um right very cool twist on like the pretty woman thing that you said i remember people talking about that you know um having you know an older white woman sort of take this this role because it's it, it, that's something that's not really seen you know um you know the talking about the age for leading women in older roles um is something that has been talked about a lot lately you know and it's it, it seems good that it is be it is being uh portrayed in a good manner here you know um what did you say <laughs> I burped. You burped. I it. Oh, it seemed like it seemed like he was shouting from the top of like Mount St. Helens. Like, what the hell was that? He was he like he cupped his hands and shouted, but it was just a burp. Everyone, it was just a burp. Chris, what do you think about this movie? Yeah, uh, this sounds cool. Um, I also have not seen this movie. Um, what else is there to say? Uh, like, I do think that it's a really interesting prompt. I do think there's a lot you can do here. Um, I love the idea of like kind of exploring um, like all these topics, like you said, Brian, of race, uh, age, sexuality, and like how like you know one discovers themselves like even in a relatively latter part of their their lives. You know, oftentimes when you see someone of that age, you would imagine like you know they're they're past that era of their life, but you know, everyone's different. And I do think that's really cool that, like, you can still have people like that have, like, these kinds of experiences. Um, it, like, it does, I mean, I, I haven't seen the movie myself, but it does seem very sex positive, which is great. Yeah. Um, I'm really yeah. glad that a lot of films uh, in the modern day are being a lot more open and understanding of sexual of human sexuality, which I think is fantastic. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really cool uh, idea for a film. Uh, the fact that it takes place in one location, uh, you know, oftentimes I feel like that's either going to make the movie or break the movie. And uh, it seems like it, uh, this movie navigates it well enough. So, cool. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Got to check it out. Um, Chris, take us right. into your last film. All right. My first two films, I picked movies that neither of you have seen. Now I'm picking a movie that you have both seen. And, uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I wanted to pick this movie because it fits this prompt way too well. Um, and it is one of my favorite rom-coms of all time and also one of my favorite modern ones. Yeah. I have used this many times before. <laughs> this is my third time I checked. This is my third time putting it up. 
So I, I will just say this right now, regardless of whether or not we put this on final stack, I will be retiring this pick for a little while <laughs> because it has been way too common. But it's rom-coms. I felt like I had to. I just had to. Yeah. Um, I'm picking Crazy Rich Asians from by John M. Chu from 2018. Wow. Um, I am so surprised. I know. Also, I know. The, the only Asian rom-coms. I, I respect Yeah. I re- Hell yeah. I love it. Hell yeah. Uh, something you... I something think Ethan picked what he knew. Yeah. You know, whites, you know. Yeah. And then, that's what Ethan knows best. <laughs> and Brandon, Ethan knows you know, best. And, and we all know Brandon. He's just a man of the people. He's sort of... You know, he's a melting pot of cultures made into a person, you know. I don't know a man more well-cultured than him. I mean, just take a look at his room. Uh, You can just see his personality and his his (laughs) well-minded, worldly human being. Just the Arizona flag and, um, yeah. Uh, you, you know, uh, you know, Brandon, he's got, he's got lots of black friends. He's got lots of Asian friends. He's got lots of Hispanic friends. He's got lots That's of Indian true. friends. You this know, true. he, he just has connections with everybody. And I'm I glad do. that his stack, um, really I'm reflects glad that you're that. jealous that, uh, jealous of that. Yeah. I'm jealous of your syntax too. Honestly, I wish I could, um, have that as well. Crazy Rich Asians, Chris. Um, okay. I guess what? This is now the first time we've talked about this movie where I have seen it. So Yeah. <laughs> that's something new we can talk about, you know? It's okay. Wait until I bring back 500 Days of Summer or something one day, and then we can do that again. Uh, okay. So, um, oh gosh, how do I even start? Uh, so, for anyone who doesn't know, I feel like many people who are listening probably already do, or have listened to the past episode, but for anyone who doesn't know, Crazy Rich Asians follows Rachel Chu, an Asian-American girl who falls in love with her Singaporean boyfriend, Nick Young. Uh, and is invited to return home with him, only to discover his family's immense wealth, but with that come many other socioeconomic and cultural complications. Um, Yeah, it's a really interesting movie uh, to me because of that aspect. Um, Of course, you know, it is a standard rom-com fair. You know, you've got the colorful characters, you've got the fun, vibrant imagery, um, you've got the lovable, like, love interest, and then the complications that come with that, and, you know, all that stuff. um, the, but for me, this is a film that has grown more and more meaningful to me as the years have gone on. And I've gotten to a point where I'm genuinely thinking of sitting down sometime and just recording a solo commentary of this film because I think I can analyze this film in real time. Um, and I think like it's just like the way this movie navigates, like, of course, obviously, contemporary materialism, right? That's obvious. It's Crazy Rich Asians. But also like the complexities of cross-cultural identities and agent and Asian matriarch families is really well done. Um, there's so many moments in here that I can per- very personally identify with. Um, and yeah, like it's it's not a perfectly constructed film. You know, it has a very uh, like like standard look, like, you know, the imagery is, you know, it's, it's your classic rom-com fairy, right? But it, the way it navigates its themes really makes me not only believe in the story of these two people caught between their differing homes, but honestly, like, genuinely believing in, like, the authenticity of it and thinking, like, the themes are so well executed because I personally can find things in here that, like, yeah, like, I understand that feeling. Um, Yeah, and also just to throw this out there, I'm sure people know, but this is the first Hollywood studio film in the last, up until it came out, in the last 25 years that had an all Asian cast, which is pretty unbelievable. Once you realize that the last time that happened was in 1993 with the joy luck club, which is also a great film. Um, yeah. Okay. That's my whole spiel about crazy rich Asians. I've talked about this movie a billion times. Uh, I think it's wonderful. I'll probably do that commentary sometime and like throw that out there with stack sometime. Um, but yeah, crazy rich Asians. You guys have both seen it. Ethan, I want to hear your, your thoughts first. Cause you're fresh. Yeah, I'm fresh on it. Um, I thought this movie was good. Uh, I love, um, first of all, the thing I love the most as a production designer, the production value behind this movie, seeing the just the extravagancy of Singapore, you know? Yeah. Um, a place I've always wanted to go to. Um, and just like, just dive into the wealth of these people from Singapore, you know? Um, it just it, it was just a beautiful looking film. I mean, 
the wedding ceremony itself, I feel like is pretty has become pretty iconic in terms of production design. Uh, a lot of people talk about it. I I love it. It's sort of you know it's um a East versus West storyline um, but taken from you know uh asian americans versus americans uh invert asian not asian americans versus <laughs> americans asian americans versus asians you know race war yeah race war race this war. is like a race, race war movie war. no race war. um it it reminds me of the farewell and sort mm-hmm. of you know yeah definitely definitely uh you know uh aquafina character aquafina characters who's She's also in, in this movie uh but her and Constance Constance Wu share a lot in common of sort of like grappling with um, their identity, you know, mm-hmm. when faced with such with a culture that seems very familiar, distant, but not yeah, d- familiar, distant, but, but distant. also very familiar, and just sort of the confusion they get from interacting with the people, you know. I mean, the relationship between her and Michelle Yeoh's character. Mm-hmm. Um, is so good. I think that 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 is what makes this movie. You know, is their relationship, um, and Michelle Yeoh just owns this movie as just like this really powerful mother figure. You know, in this family, um, and Henry Golding. You know, I, I, I am a straight man, but I think he is the one of the most handsome men alive. Uh, oh just yeah. Like, just I don't know. He is just a very handsome dude, you know. Like, he is the he is like attractive because he isn't like your typical Hollywood type. Yeah, like we he talked about not only in his like physique, but also just like his just how he his facial. Himself. Yeah, the way he presents, he's so like charming. Yeah, snake eyes. I I, I think he would be a good Batman. I honestly think that. I could see that honestly. Give him, give him the right director. I could see it. Yeah. Uh, under the new management, I don't think it's gonna happen. But we'll, <laughs> that's we'll true. Well, we'll maybe, maybe, that. maybe <laughs> when uh, you know Warner Brothers is sold to Universal, maybe then we'll see. Um, okay. Which is happening, everybody. That's just fucking depressing. Um, yeah, I thought it was a solid movie. Um, and just a, a very, very extravagant film that tells a very touching story you know um chris and i were talking about this um what movie were we talking about uh where like the perfect movie is a movie that can be enjoyed for its spectacle but also can all but separately be enjoyed for digging deeper into its themes um Mm -hmm. and i feel like you can definitely do that by this is a big spectacle romantic comedy it has drama. It has comedy. You know, um, it has a, a, a touching romance. Um, but if you want to dig deeper into why those things work, you got to dig into this through a uh, like social cultural analysis between uh, Eastern cultures and uh, Asian Americans. You know, um, which just makes the film all the more satisfying. You know, um, so yeah, Brandon and I knew this was gonna come uh, when we. We're talking earlier. We're like, there's no way Chris isn't going to pick this, even though it's been picked two times. But I'm okay with that because <laughs> I got to talk about it now, you know? Um, yeah, and it's a cool movie. Brandon, got anything else to say? You're muted. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. no, you're just not talking. He's just uh, gathering his thoughts. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, a- it's a movie. And we like it because we like the chemistry between Constance Wu and Henry Golding and their ability to really make it, it feels like a real romance. And I know that's kind of cliche to say, but like it feels like they're like actually like going through things as a couple that you would go through in a relationship, especially if it's in a long term one. Um, not that I would have any experience. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, mm. it's beautiful. Mm. <laughs> How quaint! Mm. This quaint. All right. Well, um, let's move on to the next topic here. Um, come on, have some fun. Have some <laughs> All fun, right, guys. It's true. It is actually fun to make fun of yourself. I always do say that a lot. If you can't make fun of yourself, then what's the point? You know. Um. 
which brings me to my last film, a film that does make fun of itself, uh, being it makes fun of the genre of romantic comedy. I had to being pick it, guys. Hardos. Being, I'm picking being the Ricardos. That movie makes me Just... go, oh, 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 whoa, oh, what a what a rip! I raffle when I watch that movie. Uh, no, I'm picking. We've all seen it. Uh, they came together. I couldn't not pick it. Oh, of uh, course. I it, didn't think it of is, this one, but yes, of course. Yeah, it's the um, you know, it's the modern romantic comedy because it's self reflects It's a postmodern romantic comedy because it's a parody of literally every romantic comedy that has come before it um if you know david wayne and you know his films with wet hot american summer um it's done in the same vein um paul rudd amy poehler just it is just relentless it, it's a movie that's like so amateur not amateur um so immature not yeah immature not amateur with its uh parody of the romantic comedy genre that it comes back around to being brilliant um by the way they they just hammer down uh you know cliches uh in dialogue and cliches in plot they make you so aware that they are cliches that they are pointing this out and saying this is a cliche that has poisoned this genre for so long i think the romantic comedy did become a bit like it did it did decrease in value in the 2000s and early 2010s you know because of these cliches that this film presents and i think david waynes just does an excellent you know uh satire of it all and um it it is just so funny uh you can say that again tell me about it you know um one of the that that is one of the funniest scenes. I remember showing this to Brandon, and when we got to that scene, uh, we were just losing it. You know, um, you could say that again. You know, I showed this to Brandon, and when we, <laughs> when I put on that scene, we were just losing it. You know. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, so when I you know when I showed this to Brandon, uh, I I when we got to that scene, uh, we were just you know we were just losing it. It was so. Funny. You can say that. Again. You can say that again. You know, when uh when I showed this to Brandon, we we watched that scene and we were just losing it, you know. It's just so funny. You can say that again. You know, when I when I showed this to Brandon, you know, we watched that scene and we were just losing it. It's so funny. Tell me about it. You know, when I showed this to Brandon, uh we watched that scene and we were just losing it. It was so funny. Okay, that's it. We're done. Come on. Come on. Got a couple more times. But you you guys get the point now. Um, yeah, there's it, so many good jokes. It this. is it is by far one of the most underrated films ever. I feel like some of the most underrated films are modern parody films because I think people became so sick of the parody genre. Epic um, movies. The because of the movies. epic movies Super. and the scary movies. Like, those those fucking guys who made those movies, they, they killed an entire genre. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, they yeah. alone killed an entire genre with their fucking stupidity that people because... like do not want to they didn't even they were not interested in parody movies anymore. Right. It's crazy. From the mid 2000s and the even in the 2010s like you look at Pop Star, they came together, Walk Hard, all of those movies failed at the box office. Yeah, nobody saw them because they were just like we I can't take parodies anymore after these two fucking guys and their epic movies and superhero yeah, movies. Exactly. Oh my god. They they need to go they need to go to cinema jail. They are in cinema jail. They're in movie jail. Like they're not getting out for a while. Actually, didn't one of them wrote Chernobyl, the show? Didn't Wait, one of what? them write? Yeah, That's one of the crazy. dudes was the showrunner for Chernobyl, <laughs> which is Actually, like one, one of the, the best one of the better one of the, one better of the best TV shows I've, I've seen like ever. That show is ins- insanely good. Um, if you haven't seen that miniseries, go check it out. It is like so dark and depressing and sad and like true to historical events. Uh, go Maybe watch they it. Should just stick to drama. Yeah, and not parody movies. I, it, it's just insane. Anyways, they came together. One of the most underseen, underrated movies ever. Perfect romantic comedy because it deconstructs the romantic comedy. It does have a touching romance, you know, but yeah. it's also poking fun at it, and it's really, it's just, it's so great, you know. You can't get better than Paul Rudd and Amy Poehler. It, it's so good. What do you guys think? 
I mean, I love the movie. When you showed it to me, I was like kind of unsure. Like you were like, oh, this is really funny. And I'm like, I've like never like I've seen the poster for the movie. But I actually before I didn't know that it was a parody movie until it started. Me too. And then I, when I watched it, because I just wanted to watch it because I wanted to watch all these Paul Rudd movies. And I'm like, oh, yeah. great. Well, this seems like a really gr- like cheesy, like, uh, you know, romantic comedy because the poster is really convincing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was just like, all right, let's just get this. I watched it on my iPhone during a road trip because I thought I was like, I don't have to pay attention to this. I just want to see it because yeah. I want to watch every Paul Rudd movie. But it was actually it just, really good. It looks like a Woody Allen movie from the poster. Or like a Judd Apatow movie. It doesn't yeah. look like a Or uh, even like a Hallmark movie, you know? Even. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like the comedy is great. Uh the romance is touching. It does have a few misses in there that are pretty bad, but when you're firing a joke every like second, it's gonna happen in a movie. Yeah. And you gotta just realize that not every joke is meant for you. Uh, but then you will run into a joke and you'll be laughing for like two minutes and be like, rewind, I missed some of the movie, or I just want to listen to that bit over and over again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's yeah. iconic. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, for me, uh, I remember you guys showed me this movie. I also really enjoyed myself with it. There are, there are many a joke in this film that uh, are so, so funny. Um, I think my favorite one is the one where um, he, uh, Paul Rudd, um, Amy Poehler's and her parents are testing Paul Rudd <laughs> be- by forcing, by getting Amy Poehler's mom to try and seduce yeah. Paul Rudd and to use that as like a test to see if she he's loyal. Good. And then when he passes yeah. the test, he's like, oh, come on. I'm going to fuck your mom. Like, like, fuck yeah. your mom. Come on, let me fuck your mom. <laughs> the way love Paul Rudd delivers it is just so good. He's like, oh, can I do the test again? Come on, let me fuck your mom. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, what's happening? Bobby, oh, what's happening? I want to fuck you so bad right now. <laughs> and he, he pulls up his it. grandma's dress and it's like a 20-year-old woman's ass. Oh, my God. If you haven't um, seen... I I, yeah. I I feel bad we're spoiling the jokes if you haven't seen this movie, folks. But if you if you haven't, you gotta go out and check it. Check it. Oh yeah, go check it out. It's great. There's so right. many good cameos that we're not spoiling. Though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, it's great. So many so many good comedy legends of the uh you know late the mid two thousands and early twenty tens. You know, like some of the best people from SNL of that era are in this movie and. You know, because you, you usually forget, like, what, who has been comedy, like, who are comedy stars during that time? Uh, but this movie reminds you who's funny, you know? Um, alrighty, and there is our romantic comedy. Uh, there are all of our stacks, so let's run down our films one more time before we get to deciding this final stack. Brian, you want to kick us off with your stack? Yeah, I had Pretty Women, yep. Jerry Maguire, and <gasps> Good Luck to Leo Grande. Hey, you did an order. All right, Chris, what about you, bro? All right, I had Comrades, Almost a Love Story, Fat Choice Spirit, and Crazy Rich Asians. There we go. And now for my white people movies, let's go. I got The Lady Eve, What's Up Doc, and They Came Together. Ah. All righty. Whew, what a stack. I think They Came Together should be there. I think we should have a parody, a classic, and something maybe a little... A little Modern spicy movie. in the middle. I don't know. Um, I think, I think I, Crazy Rich Asians is a modern classic. Yeah? yeah? It's a modern classic on the story. I It is a traditional classic romantic comedy. You know? It just is. in yeah. a different setting that tackles these really great themes. You know? But it's structurally a classic romantic comedy. Yeah. So I feel like we can throw that in there as our classic, you know? I'd be fine with that. And then if we want to do something, if we want to flip it on his head, maybe good luck to you, Leo Grande, you know? Because that's sort of, it's a di- it's a twist on it, you know, where it's these, yeah. it's it's two archetypes that you don't, you know, two genders and archetypes that you don't really see, you know? And yeah. It's- they never really go together. And also, like, they don't... It's not intention to fall for each other, sort of. Thing. 
and maybe they do, maybe they don't. You'll have to see. Um, but there's a lot more questioning, questioning to it than the other movies where it's a full-hearted embrace of the other person. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then they came together, which is just a total deconstruction of it all, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel bad that we're not including any films that came out before the 2000s, you know? No 20th century films, but, uh, eh, who cares? It's our I show. was only alive for one year of that. Who cares about those years? Nothing cool happened then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're living the present. We're living the now. It's the 21st century. Come on. We pitched those movies, though. We yeah. all pitched movies. These are all recommended movies that you guys can watch. They're all good, you know? This is your assignment. Watch all nine of the movies every week. <laughs> we're not going to... You know what? We're not going to do a final stack. Just watch them all. No. We're going to do a final stack, and it seems like we've got it. Um, so, should we start classic, then have a little twist, then the deconstruction in terms of our order? Y'all think that'd be good? Yeah. Alrighty. Well, then it's settled. Let's run down Stack's official best romantic comedies, final stack. Brian, you want to kick us off with our first film? Oh, no, no. Chris, sorry. I totally disregarded yeah. the order. I was looking at the was order like... in which we presented our films. Chris, you are first with our classic romantic comedy right. film. So, our first film was John M. Chu's 2018 rom com, Crazy Rich Asians. A very uh, structurally classical uh, romantic comedy, but also deeply elevated by its rich themes of contemporary materialism, cross-cultural identities, and Asian matriarch families. Uh, A definite must-watch if you come from an Asian family, but also a definite recommend if you are a fan of romantic comedies. Boom. What is our second film, Brandon? Hit it. Our next film is Good Luck to You, Leo Grande, a deconstruction of the genre that manages to have as many laughs as it has touching moments between the characters. Uh, It's definitely more sex positive than most rom-coms and isn't super racy, but it's a wonderful deconstruction, so get on with it. And our last film is David Wayne's parody of the romantic comedy genre. Good post-modern, postmodern romantic comedy if you're looking for that sort of stuff. They came together. Paul Rudd, Amy Poehler, whole cast of amazing comedic actors come together. Uh, to, it's, it is sort of a celebration of the romantic comedy, but by roasting it, you know? And all of its crazy tropes um, and just some hilarious moments and one that will stick with you for a while. You know? You can say that again, you know? Uh... And that's our stack, everyone. That's our episode. That's the show. I'd like to thank everyone for listening, uh, for sticking through with us today. Uh, you can listen to us all on iTunes, YouTube, X videos, Red Tube, Simpsons porn, incest no, no, porn videos. We, we didn't. We did No, I didn't upload there. You didn't upload there yet. No. Brent, there's a whole market of stacked heads that we would be gaining from those websites oftentimes the community of people who comment and engage with porn videos are nicer than people on youtube yeah so you ever notice you ever read the comments (laughs) you ever read the comments they're very they're very they're very positive Uh, let's 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 hear everyone uh in the comments below share your favorite stories from viewing the comments on pornhub share that below let us know and your favorite rom-coms. Cause and we your do favorite care. rom Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Throw that in, too. <laughs> That's what this show's about, too. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you all so much for listening. And uh, guess what? Next week, we are starting Halloween-a-thon. Halloween-a-thon is back. We are in October now. Woo! Um, it's our I'm, third I don't think I'm going to add the That's Halloween-a-thon wild. music to this one. Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah. Stay tuned for Halloween-a-thon. All right. Bye, everybody. Big wet kiss.